Welcome to Open Source Spotlight. We invite open source authors and ask them to show the tools they're working on. Today we have Frederick. Hi, Frederick. Tell us about yourself and about the tool you want to show us. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm the machine learning lead at Ancor. We are a uh, computer vision company. And so uh, we have built this open source tool for doing data exploration and model debugging of uh, computer vision systems. And that's what I'm going to be showing today. I'm really excited to be here. Thanks a lot for uh, having me. And thanks a lot for all the nice work you're doing around here. Yeah, thanks for joining. Yeah. Are you uh, OK with me starting? Yep. All right. So what I want to be talking about is uh, understanding data, labels, and uh, auto predictions. Now, um, screen. Um, what we've seen a lot of when talking to customers is that uh, they use a lot of notebooks. And we kind of don't like notebooks that much. They're great for some things, but when you go um, into sort of bigger projects, they really quickly become really annoying. Main reason is that they're really hard to maintain. Right? You come back to a notebook then the second time, and suddenly stuff is not defined. Um, you have to reuse codes across notebooks. For example, data loaders is a very common issue. Um, sometimes it's even hard to reproduce things. Um, and finally, there's this big bad issue, which is, you know, you have done something really, really cool. Then you save and it's like, oh, I can't save because someone else is also working. Then you have like 10 files at some point with different sort of version names. Um, and so what we realized is that many of the things that are done in all these notebooks are typically um, sort of from the same kind of uh, sphere. And uh, we thought since we're doing it internally at Uncode, we might as well you know, help everyone else with the same things. So it would be sort of tasks around you know, data creation, uh, validating that uh, machine learning labels are correctly. It would also be stuff like model evaluation. Um, I don't want to put more uh, words on it here because the real thing I want to do is like really show the demo. Um, and one thing I just want to mention before that demo is that typically what machine learning engineers do is they break down their data based on various different sort of uh, metrics. We like to call them quality metrics. It could be geometric stuff like what's the, you know, uh, ge geometries of uh, your labels, but it could also be heuristics like, uh, you know, brightness of the image or you might have some suspicion about something that harms your model performance. So you will write some sort of logic to find that thing and then evaluate your model. It could also be a lot of data and stuff like that. And that's sort of the, the, the cornerstone of the tool I'm going to show you now. So what I just want to show is a tool called Uncorrected. And it's basically an idea. The idea is an active learning tool that will uh, help you do uh, everything from data exploration to um, model debugging. All right, so uh, enough uh, slides. Uh, let's get started. So let's imagine you have a project. So I try to keep it simple here. But I think you'll get the point. You have a data project. You have images and you have some annotations. And the images is just like a long list of like 7,000 images in this case. And now you want to sort of do the first level of data creation. And typically what people do is they write these notebooks and they start visualizing things. And what we like to do instead is having one common tool that will allow you to uh, inspect the data. So what you can do is you can do pip install uh, uncore active. I'm not going to do it. Uh, not with Y, at least. Uh, and then afterward, you could do uncorrective. I have an alias here, EA, in it. You could provide it with the uh, data folder and the data glob. So I want to find through the images. I want to find all the JPEGs. I want to give my project this name. And this is my Python stop or like Python file to transform labels from one format into our format. So it's really like um, very customizable. You can just, you know, transform any sorts of labels you want. If you run this command, and then it'll ingest all the data and do all this stuff that you're doing again and again and again uh, in Colab. Okay, this is now we don't uh, something I did already. But, right, sorry? now we don't have any label data, right? All we have now is images. And yes, what that's a good question. Yes. Yeah. Label these images, right? Give them labels. Um, it's actually something else. So, so let's, let me go back here really quickly. So it actually does have labeled this data set. Um, and it was just like to illustrate that no matter how the data format is of the labels, you can easily 
uh, you know, write a, um, a transformer that'll just, you know, take in the image and then it'll pass them into a common format. So it's just a way of saying it's really easy to customize the import to also get your own labels in. It doesn't have to be a sort of predefined um, format, right? So if I then do EA start after I've done the import or the uh, initialization of the project, then what will happen is a, a web tool will show up. And the idea is really that we want to sort of do all the things that people do in notebooks, but just do it once and in a shareable manner. So the scenario right now is there are some labels and we want to, to make sure that these labels are correct, right? Uh, yes, that could be one scenario. It would be like label validation. Mm -hmm. Let me just jump into the, the project. I didn't show you the images, but it's a data set full of cats and dogs. Um, and I reckon that this is probably a bit small. Uh, so what you will see is a bunch of sort of high-level statistics first. How many images do I have? What is this? The, uh, you can see distributions over different qualities of the data. For example, what is the distribution of sharpness within my data set? the you know, image contrast. So a lot of sort of off the shelf qualities of the data. Same goes if you, so I cheated a little bit. So I, I did this label transform. So I also in, imported labels for this thing. So I can also see the distribution of classes within my data set. How are they distributed in terms of, you know, different qualities of the data and the label. Now, the next thing I can do is I can go to the Explorer and then I can start exploring my data. First of all, I can see this grid of all the images in the data set, see um, sort of embeddings and an embedding space of the data as well. So this is another thing we've seen over and over again. People do uh, you know, embeddings and try to visualize them. So it could be like TSNI or in this case, UMAP. Here, I, I, it seems like I got out the box, the data set from this particular region. Now, what I can also do is I can start selecting things here and collect them, them into uh, or by tagging them. Say I give these a tag. These are oh. Oh. now they will all have this box tag, and I can always come back via this filter section and filter on the tags. And then I can find so so if I find interesting examples of you know label errors or of data that I want labeled, if I'm doing active learning, um, then I can collect them this way. And I think this is a really powerful way of sort of. Um, in the first place, just you know, getting to know your data and being able to, to make your way back to your findings. You can also do, uh, let me do uh, the selection and then reset the filters. What you can also do is you can also search by uh, natural language. So you can do, if I want to find, let's say, uh, big dogs, let's try that. Then it'll use uh, lib embeddings and then it'll compare this text embedding to the clip embeddings. This is another way of, if, let's say you had a really, really big data set. You don't really have any labels. You don't know what's in it. This is a really fast way to sort of find data of a particular type. Um, another thing we have seen on and on again. So this is really sort of one of the powers of the tool. It's exploring the data. Now, the second thing I want to uh, show you, now I'm going to jump back to uh, the code. I'm going to stop this server again. Um, is this thing. So if you want to now take the data and do something with it in your sort of regular machine learning pipeline, what you can do is you can do an active data set. You're going to give it the associate, like the associated project ID. Uh, it's very easy it's in the documentation, how to find it. And then what you can do is you can start using it exactly as you're used to with PyTorch. So just do a data, this particular data set. Um, in this case, I'm going to grab a tag name from the command line and give it as part of the data set. So now it'll filter the data based on this tag. And this is really, really smart because now you can start defining model unit test cases, essentially, uh, from your data set based on these tags. So let's say I figure out that my model is performing really poorly on very bright images. Then I could create a collection of bright images. And then when I introduce my second model in my sort of model iteration, go back and test against this uh, subset whether I introduced any regressions. Um, right, so that's a way of filtering the data based on the text you found from oh, uh, the Explorer. 
So this way I can sort of do, I can compute accuracy uh, of my models. But obviously before I, need, I can do that, I need to actually predict something. Uh, and I did uh, a quick classifier that is just like a zero shot classification model. So it just, just uses the class names within the project and then it can predict things. So I'm just gonna skip the part where I, I do the import of the predictions because it's this kind of TV kitchen thing. And now I'm gonna just show you one of the last things I wanna show you in this demo. And then I'm gonna uh, skip the word back. Let's see. Um, this is because I did not start the server again. So there is another command here, which is uh, uncollective import predictions. And you give it a file where you store your predictions. And then you will um, be able to see them in the UI as well. Now, one thing I want to mention as well is that I showed this for classification problems, but it also works for object detection, works for uh, instance segmentation as well. All right. So final bit here. If you then come to the predictions tab within the tool, what you can do is you can see, you know, standard metrics like the one score, the model accuracy. But what I think is really, really powerful, and one of them, I'm, the things I'm most proud of, is that you can also see uh, the importance of various different quality metrics. So I showed you before that you can see the brightness of every image, the contrast. And this is basically a part of the mutual information between the model performance and each one of these metrics. So this gives me a very quick insight into where I should probably look. So uh, I can see the same thing for uh, correlation as well. So it seems like uh, if sharpness is low, uh, then the, uh, like there's negative correlation between sharpness and the model performance. So then the next thing I can do is I can also plot these things. So for example, here I plot on the x-axis the model confidence and on the y-axis the prediction, uh, or sorry, the precision of the model. So I can see like there's this, as I would probably expect, the, um, the trend is that when my model is confident, it's very precise, but when it's uh, unsure, it is also um, not that precise. So it seems like it's to some extent uh, calibrated. But I can also find this for other uh, properties. For example, I saw that um, brightness was one of them. So let's have a look at brightness. Oh, okay. So it turns out that when images are really, really bright, our model is not performing that well. So now I can, you know, go back to my explorer. I can find by filtering. So I can here, I can sort by the data by brightness and I can see the distribution of brightness. Then I could collect a subset of data that is really, really bright, give them a tag and come back to my data loader and do the, the exact test I want to do against my model. Um, yeah, so this is how far we have gotten so far with this uh, open source project. And we have obviously a lot of things that we still want to do, but um, this is the state and I, I, I truly hope that this is useful for someone out there doing computer vision. Yeah, that's really amazing. Thanks for doing that. Mm. I have a question. So when at the beginning and here we can also see this UMAP, like mm -hmm. um, embeddings, I assume that uh, you yourself create these embeddings. Like when we just start the project, we say, okay, the images live in this folder, you start indexing it or somehow loading it, right? And then you compute these embeddings yourself, right? It's not the user who, who does that. Um, yes, that's true. So when you, you do the initialization, we know that a lot of people will want to do these things, right? Exploration using UMAP embeddings. So we will use an off the shelf model, do the image embeddings and allow you to search. It's mm -hmm. one of these things that we have seen again and again. So why mm -hmm. not just do it once? And that, and you use clip, uh, yep. it, the, then that's why you can use text for searching. Yes. Very well spotted. Yeah. Cool. Okay, this is a great project. And for how long have you worked on this? How old is the project? Um, just about a year, a bit more than a year by now. And how many people are working on it? We are um, right now five sort of work working actively on it. And then there's sort of the various contributors coming in and out. Here and there. Well, maybe can you show us the, your GitHub project, your GitHub repository? Um, One. 
Yeah, it looks beautiful. And um, if somebody wants to contribute, how do they go about that? Yeah, so um, there is a bunch of uh, issues you can uh, uh, chip in with. But one of the things that we really want help with is project re uh, like uh, you know specific quality metrics. So one of the things that is really easy to plug in is um, computations on a particular image that is good for sorting or filtering the data. Right now we have contrast, brightness, sort of these obvious ones, but probably for AV or for you know medical use cases or whatever, there might be some uh, some quality metrics out there that we didn't think of quite yet. Um, so we would really like people to contribute with these. And it's really easy. There's in the bottom of this page, there's also like a contribution guide. So you can see how to do it, which standards we follow. And um, yeah, that is, uh, that is great. And it's all written in Python plus some JavaScript, right? Yes. So the back end is Python. Uh, the CLI is Python. Uh, the front end is uh, React. And uh, what are your plans? What do you want to work on next? Yeah, um, there are many things that we want to work on. So it's called Anchor Active because we really believe in active learning. We believe in like data-centric AI where you you really think of your data as your code essentially. And that's why we want to make sure to integrate very well with you know labeling platforms. We want to be sure that you can integrate your uh, model predictions in a way where you can do actual active learning with acquisition functions. So, so essentially use the model to select what to label next and then send off that batch to, uh, for labeling and have that come back and sync with the project. Um, so you can sort of do iterative improvements of the model. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your next step is integration with these platforms, right? That you can do this easily. Uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, one of the, the, the major ones. Yes. Okay. Well, I have a last question. Do you have any advice to anyone who is watching this? Um, I think my main advice would be avoid using notebooks when, when you can foresee already that it, it'll become something that you want to use again. I think it's really, really valuable when it's something you're doing as a one-off thing. But when you want to reuse it, try to figure out another way to do it. Yeah, I remember that's, using that's notebooks labeling oh you did for labeling even you yeah, labeling doing this uh this sort of analytics and then yeah of course the moment somebody else wants to start using your notebook too then you have all these problems everything explodes exactly yeah. Yeah. okay yeah thanks a lot frederick for joining us today for showing the demo for telling us about the plans and thanks for also doing this in open source and for everyone who is watching this please give them a star and uh, what do you have on the slide yeah no it's just like pip install and collective then you can use it this is our slack community um if you want to ask questions come with feedback or raise ideas that would be fantastic so. mm -hmm. and the star yeah star. <laughs> okay well, I guess that's it. Yes. Yeah. Thanks a lot for having me, man.